New name, new aspirations. Same team, same purpose. More than 20 years since we started, Afin Huang Asset Management is proud to reintroduce ourselves as AHAM Asset Management. It's still us, just bolder and stronger. Join us as we embark on this new chapter together. AHAM Capital, built on trust. This is a podcast from BFM 89.9, The Business Station. Hello, welcome to Redefining Success, the show where we speak to passionate people from various fields about their careers and lives, what makes them tick and how they define success. I'm Dashran Johan. On the show with me today is Melanie Hua. She's a former lecturer of mine, in fact, and she is the founder of and instructor at Flow Dive Center. Welcome to the show, Melanie. How are you? Thanks, Dashan. It's so nice to see you again and so nice to see where you're at today. You know, <laughs> really good. I'm really, really proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm very excited to talk to you as well. Um, let's start with the big picture question and then we'll go from there. How do you define success? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, for me, success, I think it's very, very personal and also very, very uh, subjective and fluid, I think, uh, to everyone uh, and at different points of life. Uh, but for me personally, I think uh, how I define success is uh, how uh, I'm able to do what I want to do uh, and what really, really motivates me. And I guess uh, what my true passion is actually to explore the, the natural world. Uh, right. to actually see uh, the world, uh, to see more animals, to see to see the natural world, I guess. Uh, and of course, to do that, uh, you know, we have to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be able to uh, afford that, I guess. Yeah. Right. So um, has your definition of success changed over time or has this how you've always viewed success? It has been, but earlier in my career, it wasn't uh, probably as uh, as clear uh, mm-hmm. as day and night uh, as of now. Uh, but it always has been something I want to do. And uh, over the years, I still feel the same. I guess, like I said, fluid, right? Success is mm-hmm. very fluid. And as well as, as we grow at this, at, and at different points of time of life, uh, you have little goals uh, that eventually build towards the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. I guess it has always been in the search of what makes me happy and and, right. and it always goes back to the fact that, you know, uh, I will want to explore the natural world. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's just little by little, you know, like just one decision at a time and one decision at a time. And then it just eventually led me to, you know, becoming a school by instructor. And then obviously, you know, as I teach after three years, then there's an opportunity that comes by for me to open up a dive center. Uh, and of course, as we grow, you know, there will always be opportunities that come by and there will be opportunities that goes, you know. So uh, what really makes us who we are, I guess, is the decisions that we make as we go along the way. And of course, uh, again, then this decision uh, changes according to then what you define as success or what makes you happy at that time. Uh, and again, going back to the whole loop, right, I guess since like at the beginning of my career, uh, I guess that has always been the un- underlying uh, happiness uh, in kind of exploring the natural world. Right. And I guess just small little decisions here and there, you know, it kind of brings me back to where I'm at currently, you know. And like you said, I'm really, really happy to a certain degree that, you know, I'm able to kind of tie what makes me happy, what my passion mm-hmm. is. And of, of course, you know, to, to make money out of it as well. Right. Um, yeah. Let's talk about your your journey, um, especially in diving, right? Because I, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you were my lecturer, I think 2014, 2015, around there. Um, were you already a diving instructor back then? And, and why did you decide to become a diving instructor because to explore the world um, even if you want to explore like the seas and the underwater world and things like that you just need to be a diver you don't need to be a diving instructor right so what prompted you um, pushed you down this path Right, yes. Yeah. So back then, uh, when I was your lecturer, I was already a dive instructor. Right. Um, but I used to be a uh, uh, marketing, basically I used to be in marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a marketing a marketer in a digital marketing firm uh, for 
a good five years, I think, uh, before I decided to quit. Uh, and uh, after I quit, I became lecturer and then I started teaching diving. Uh, now, why did I decide to do that? Um, well, corporate world is probably just not for me. Uh, <laughs> that's one. Uh, number two is just, um, I've always loved diving. Uh, in fact, I've always loved water uh, since right. young. I'm the only one, the only uh, child that probably follows my mom uh, whenever she goes to the pool, uh, <laughs> whenever we go to the island, you know, I, I always love snorkeling. Right. So it's actually my first thing uh, that I, I actually paid for myself the moment I'm out of college uh, to get my license. Uh, so I've been diving for about a good 12 years and uh, I've been teaching for seven years. Uh, so yeah. It's been it's uh it's been quite a while, <laughs> and uh I guess it's just kind of a thing that at at the beginning honestly I didn't know where it would lead me. Uh, I would never have an idea that you know I would start a dive center. Uh, but uh again, like I said, it's just one step at a time, one decision at a time. Uh, and at at that time when I quit my job, uh, and I was thinking, you know, I love diving. You know, why don't try it out as a as a as an option? You know, to make some money. Right. Uh, and uh, and then again, after that, I've done it for about three years, uh, freelance. And then the opportunity came, and then I start flow uh flow dive center, just before pandemic. Uh, so it has been a very very interesting journey as well. Uh, with flow, you know, we just got to roll with the punches, and uh, you just got to. Do what you got to do uh, to keep yourself happy, you know. And for me, it all goes back to the same point. I just love exploring the natural natural world. Talk to me about the difference um, between, you know, the, 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 the challenges you face as a diving instructor versus the challenges you face as a business owner. And, and which aspect of, you know, Flow Dive School, uh, Dive Center, do you really enjoy more? Do you enjoy the management <laughs> aspect of it more or the hmm. diving and, and teaching people how to dive aspect more? That's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I, I, I fairly enjoy both. I fairly enjoy teaching to a certain degree, but of right. course teaching, uh, you get a fair amount of challenges as well. Right. Uh, you you will meet a lot of kinds of people uh, and people with different kinds of uh, uh, or degree of, you know, comfort in water, right? right? Uh, and, and you have to kind of think of ways on how to uh, uh, teach them in different ways as well because everyone learns differently. Uh, and you definitely need to have some uh, patience and also empathy. Uh, to be able to teach, right? So, so that part uh, I do fairly enjoy uh, quite a bit. But uh, doing it for quite a while, it kind of uh, tires you down as well. Mm. But uh, then you have the other side where obviously you love diving for what it is. You know, you get to see amazing things up close: manta rays, whale sharks. You know, all these majestic creatures up close. And of course, you have little things that you never think that would exist, uh, like nudibranchs, you know, and they're beautiful. So uh, exploring all these kind of things definitely bring joy back to being a dive instructor. Uh, but of course, then the challenges with business, right? <laughs> so again, I guess uh, I'm quite glad, you know, I have a background of marketing uh, and uh, I have always have background uh, being in like business as well. So, so that kind of like plays out you know, having this business as well, how it actually helped me build this business. And uh, like I said earlier, you know, I I, I love uh, marketing, uh, for marketing, uh, probably not being in corporate, but I love marketing for right. marketing itself. So I do love the business part of things. And it is interesting because then that is like the 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 part of the the job where I have to kind of navigate and and use strategies, you know, especially through COVID, <laughs> <laughs> for lack of a better word, you know, navigate through the storms, right? To to make sure you know the business survive, mm -hmm. um, and of course the business thrive as well through these hard times. So, uh, both parts of things excite me. Uh, in a way, uh, obviously diving excites me for. You know, because it's my passion. I love natural world. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, the business side of things excite me because it gets me thinking, you know, gets me thinking. And 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 I guess it's the best of both worlds for me. Right. Uh, but of course, both comes with challenges and it does hire me now sometimes as well. But then you kind of shift focus to then what makes you happy. 
your career is something very unique, right? Um, it, it's not, uh, you know, being a diving instructor. It's It sounds very exciting. It is very exciting. But what exactly do you do? Uh, paint a picture for me. What does your day-to-day look like? <laughs> As a dive instructor, sometimes... Right. Um, Obviously, we we the goal is to bring uh people introduce them to the the whole new world basically right right you're introducing them to a whole new world it is totally different underwater the moment you're beneath the surface is entirely different mm-hmm. in fact you know Avatar Avatar yes you know, Avatar to way yeah. of water gorgeous. it's actually it's gorgeous right mm-hmm. um but this is entirely different because. You can never have this feeling except for doing it by yourself. Right. Because even if you watch documentaries, right, it's mm-hmm. always 2D. Yeah. It's always, always 2D. And when you dive for yourself, uh, it is everything, right? It's 4D. You feel it, you see it, right? You hear it. Mm-hmm. And uh and it is it, it encounters, you know, with, with this kind of creatures, it is personal to you for life. Because everyone, even even if your friend dives, you dive, right? Even if you're on the same trip the experience you get might be very, very different. And the encounter that you have with all these creatures is personal to yourself. So introducing people underwater, Mm -hmm. uh, it is something very, very exciting to me. uh, And also very, very frustrating at times because it is challenging, right? Um, From a day-to-day basis, uh, you have to reteach people how to breathe in state. uh, In fact, you know, breathing is something so common. Like you and I, we breathe every Mm -hmm. day and you kind of don't think about it. Yep. Uh, but when you go underwater, because you have to switch where you breathe from, like you, you breathe from your mouth, and then you need to kind of re-teach people the, uh, breathing again. You need to mm. re-teach people uh, uh, what it's like being underwater. How you move underwater is very different as well when you feel weightless. And in fact, when you dive, uh, it is actually the closest feeling that you can get to being in outer space. Uh, right. A lot of uh, actually NASA uh, they actually uh, undergo this scuba diving training before they actually go to outer space. So the closest feeling that you can get to feeling weightless is actually, you know, through through diving. Mm-hmm. And obviously, all this, you have to teach them how to move underwater, how to breathe underwater. And it is, it is, um, it is challenging at times, but also very rewarding, especially people who don't know how to swim or feel very uncomfortable at the beginning. And they are willing to work with you. They don't give up. You know, they are willing to work together with you. And eventually then they actually really enjoy diving. You know, they 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 dive for many years to come and and they are very, very thankful that, you know, we are able to kind of guide them into this new world. So I guess uh, that is a bigger picture uh, mm-hmm. of, of what a dive instructor's work would be like. But of course, like the, 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 the boring stuff would be, you know, we teach them theory, we teach them pool, and then we go into the ocean, you know. On the show with me today is Melanie Hua, founder of Flow Dive Center, where she's also a diving instructor. After the break, we talk about what it takes to sustain a career as a diving instructor in Malaysia. Keep it here on Redefining Success, BFM 89.9. Welcome back to Redefining Success. I'm Dashan Johan. And on the show with me today is Melanie Hua, founder of Glow Dive Center, where she's also a diving instructor. So, Melanie, I think for most divers, the initial interest, like you said for yourself, is, uh, it starts with snorkeling. Or mm-hmm. maybe you're going on a vacation, then you go for a snorkeling trip and you're like, wow, this is mind-blowing. How do I make, like, you know, go even deeper, explore more things, right? Talk to me about the difference between that, you know, just snorkeling when you're going on some snorkeling trip uh, in Pulau Tioman or something versus actually going on a full diving adventure. Snorkeling scuba diving is entirely different, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, Snorkeling would be very, again, 2D, okay? Because what you're saying is only from the surface, right? Mm. You will be seeing the fish from the surface. So let's say if you're going to see it from the top, it's it's like that. But if you are underwater, okay, uh, okay, we all practice never touching anything, never taking anything, all right. So it's it's uh it's a uh, practice that we should all follow as as scuba divers, you know, because uh taking anything or touching anything, in, including sea creatures, uh, we might carry uh you know bacteria and 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 things that might not might be harmful to them, you know. 
uh, we shouldn't, we should never touch them. But however, you can go up close to them. Uh, uh, and also if they do come up close to you, right? So it's a very, like I say, a very 4D experience. Right. Uh, it is something that you really fully immerse yourself into. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, there are so many things in the ocean that we have never seen before. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously the usual beautiful uh, prime suspects like manta rays and whatnot. But as you dive, like I've been diving for about 11 years and wow. I'm still seeing things that I have never seen before. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of the beauty of exploring. Uh, you will see things big and small. So, uh, and you will be interested. Uh, it will be very, very interesting that you actually uh, observe the way they live. Uh, I personally really like small stuff like macro creatures. Oh. Um, and if you you get to see nudibranchs, they are very beautiful. Sea slugs, very colorful. Uh, shrimps, crabs, and just spend that five, ten minutes looking at how they live. Uh, and it's very very interesting just to observe, uh, how they interact with different creatures and how they live as well. It's very very interesting. So, as snorkeler, you will never have that kind right. of experience. Yeah. Uh, as a diver, in fact. The, the constant um, uh, wonder of kind of uh, exploring and, and finding all these kind of gems uh, and, and information, you know, uh, of this natural world, how, how, how creatures actually live out of us being humans, right? Mm-hmm. How they live uh, on a daily basis. It's, it's, it's amazing. And how does one get a diving license? What's the process like? Um, as I understand and I've seen, you have to practice in like a swimming pool first and then mm-hmm. after that, you'll go to the island for like three days, two nights and, and do something. Um, talk mm-hmm. to me about all of this. So for us, uh, we, we strongly recommend that you do your pool and theory here in PJ first or either separately first in, in KL uh, to kind of get, uh, number one, uh, to equip yourself first uh, with proper theory uh, to understand, you know, how... Uh, it works underwater, mm-hmm. physics, physiology, environment, you know, get yourself equipped with this kind of information first and then get into the pool, okay? Start learning in a very safe environment uh, in the four walls that you 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 have probably been in for, for you know, at least once in your life, <laughs> <laughs> the pool. Uh, be, be very comfortable with a new environment. Be very comfortable with the new gears, you know. Learn all the skills first. Then once you're comfortable, then go to the island. Because the the you can definitely take your, your course straight on the island as well, but we would strongly recommend that you do it in the pool first to get yourself comfortable so that it's much safer as well. And plus, you will enjoy your your whole experience diving much more right. uh, because if you get scared and then you know you don't feel comfortable then it will kind of defeat the purpose of you wanting to get your your diving license yeah so uh yeah so theory pool and then island uh to get your license what are some of the key lessons you learned about yourself and your perspective towards your work and career from dabbling in different things throughout the years Hmm. So mm-hmm. what I've learned uh, is that there is nothing that really goes to waste. Um, mm-hmm. There's no such thing as, you know, like a career prof- profession one, you know, is a waste of time. Career profession two is a waste of time. No, I think uh, whatever decisions you've made and whatever experiences that you get out of it kind of builds you. Uh, it kind of forms your character and it forms uh, your ability, you know, uh, to do whatever that you're going to do next, uh, right. regardless, you may not know what you're going to do next, you know, uh, you're definitely building yourself uh, towards something, you know. Uh, so so that is something that I've learned. And in fact, like I said, you see, I started as a marketeer. And now when I own a business, uh, you know, I use my marketing skills to market my business. Right. You know, when I teach as a lecturer, now I'm teaching diving. Mm-hmm. So so there's no such thing as it goes to waste. Um, I think at the end of the day, it builds you. It builds your ability to, to understand things and understand people as well. Uh, and I think uh, that essentially is what I kind of take away uh, throughout all the different... Uh, kind of weird careers that you think <laughs> might might kind of clump together, but it works out to a, a, a same picture. I think everything that I've done so far correlates to a certain degree. 
And what are some of the things to keep in mind when switching from careers, uh, when switching from one career to another? What advice would you give people? Um, when do you know when is the right time to switch? And when do you like do you do you take the approach when going from A to B to C that you must always have a backup in in place already, a uh, safety net that then you make the leap, or are you like doesn't matter? go, you know, like quit my job first, for example, if you want to quit your job. And then like, you know, we'll see what happens tomorrow, tomorrow. It's funny you should ask, right? So uh, when I quit my my corporate job, I right. kind of uh, don't really have a plan. Mm. Uh, honestly, my plan was very simple. I've calculated how much I need to survive. That bearing in mind, I had a car, I had a house, you know, to pay for. I'm like thinking, hmm, you know, this amount of money uh, I can probably earn if I work hard in Starbucks, right. you know, just saying, mm-hmm. right? And uh, obviously, you know, uh, tightening the belt and whatnot, you know. Um, and I was thinking, you know, that's not the worst thing, you know. Uh, I can definitely survive. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when I quit, I kind of give myself like a six months uh, period. Uh, let's just try it out, see if it works out or not, you know, on my own. If it doesn't, you know, just go back to marketing and uh, marketing firms are always hiring. So my my strategy, so to speak, was kind of to measure how much I need on a basis to survive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I know regardless what I do, I'll be able to meet that amount. And I kind of use that as a a, a, a chance uh, that I buy for myself, you know, to test it out for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I came out, and uh, honestly, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'll ever go back mm-hmm. uh, unless I probably move different countries. I need a job. I don't regret at all. Uh, and I always tell people this and in fact a lot of people ask me the same question as what you did is that if you are hungry you will never starve Mm -hmm. because I think as long as you're hungry and as long as you're looking you will definitely never starve and of course you have to make kind of uh, adjustments on what you want at the end of the day because if you continuously want a Birkin bag then you have something has got to give you know Mm -hmm. so you kind of have to adjust your reality of what you want uh, mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, move towards that. You really, really need to know uh, what makes you happy and what makes you wake up every day to wanting to go to work, you know. And then back to your question as well, you know, what is kind of like the the signal for you to kind of want to make a move, you know, right. want to make a jump. And honestly, for me, personally, just for me, it might not be for anyone. Don't move for money. You know, right. money money can be found anywhere, honestly right? It can be found anywhere. But move uh, for things that kind of makes you, like I said, wake up every morning wanting to go to work and move towards that. What does it take to sustain a career as a diving instructor in Malaysia, both from a qualities, what qualities do, do, do drive, diving instructors need to have? And also from a realities on the ground perspective in the sense that do you also need to be uh, the, an, an owner of, of, a, of a diving school or diving center to be able to sustain that career? Uh, do you need to have part-time gigs to be able to sustain that career? Or are you able to sustain uh, a career as a diving instructor in and of itself on its own? So, okay. So diving instructors mainly work off a commission basis. Right. Um, uh, for us, uh, we do provide a, 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 a basic salary, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, the majority of the chunk comes from, uh, you know, a commission basis. Mm. Now on a good month, you know, on a non-monsoon month, you can make up to even five figures on a monthly basis. Right. So it really, really depends on how hard you work for it. Uh, and and, and uh, how do you sustain a career? Uh, definitely you can sustain a career. Again, it then comes back to uh, adjusting your realities, right? What do you really want? Uh, <laughs> do you want a Birkin bag or do you want to see a wheel shark? you know right. so again you know it really really depends on the individual uh, uh, whether or not this is what you want um, uh, and at the end of the day there's no right or wrong at the end of the day it is uh, what you love and what makes you happy and um, again uh, you have to kind of uh, measure your opportunity cost right so mm-hmm. uh, do you love uh, you know what you do Uh Versus, do you want things that make you happy? No, neither one is right nor wrong. Uh, at the end of the day, it depends on the individual. 
that's it you know so how do you sustain a business uh, a, a career is uh, is seriously it really depends on yourself you don't mm-hmm. need to own a business and in fact owning a business comes with a huge different sets of headaches uh <laughs> you know <laughs> but being a freelancer uh being an instructor you can make a lot of money as well yeah and what is yeah. the most fulfilling aspect of uh being a uh, dive instructor i'm wondering if you've had um, you know, people come up to you and said, you know, I've always been afraid, you know, the the the, the underwater sea, you know, and you look at pictures or videos, it can be really scary. But, I've, I, you know, I've always wanted to go inside and because I've come to your class, you know, like it, it enabled me to do so and, and things like that. Have you had uh, encountered uh, students like that or heard stories like that um, through your journey of teaching? <laughs> <laughs> you, you will be surprised at how many students that come to me and say, Mel, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> That's the first thing that they say, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I, I always say this to them. Uh, you know what? You're not my first student that says that and you neither will you be my last. Right. You know? And in, in fact, I hope you're my last, you know? <laughs> but you, you will not be my last, right? It's yeah. very, very common and of course, it's very understand, uh, understandable because it's a whole new environment, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we are land creatures, you know? And now you're going underwater. So it's totally understandable that you feel scared you feel a little bit weird you're not comfortable you know as with anything we do at the first go you know like driving for example you know uh you it's normal to feel that but as with anything that you do like i said right it gets better Mm -hmm. you know it always 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 gets better so um so do it uh, you know don't give up even if you're scared you know don't give up continue doing it and uh eventually you will definitely do it i don't believe uh anyone cannot dive you know i believe everyone can dive it's just how long you take to do that what what if a person doesn't know how to swim yes so, so uh our school uh flow dive center we teach swimming as well ah. we are very 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 particular about having our students to be able to at least no basic swimming right you know you don't need to be michael phelps to, to dive you know but yeah. you need to know basic swimming just for safety purposes so we do have courses uh like scuba diving courses that mm-hmm. ties to swimming classes as well so you will do swimming classes to get comfortable to learn a little bit of basic swimming first and then get into your 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 scuba diving license so we also believe that number one gives the student a little bit more confidence uh, and then you will enjoy the course more because if you you're not confident if you're scared you know then you will feel worse and eventually you know you'll be like why am i doing this you know at the end of the day scuba diving is a leisure thing you want to have fun you want to see things you know so so be safe be comfortable you know spend more time spend a little bit more money and 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 do it right you know yeah and how does it make you feel when you come come across these students who you know come to you saying they are very scared and then they go through your, your your classes and whatnot, and you get to watch them actually, you know, conquer their fears. Yeah. And now they are exploring, exploring, you know, the sea and, and all of that. And just prior to that, they were they were scared <laughs> to even get into the pool, perhaps, you know. Um, yeah. how how does that make you feel? When students mm-hmm. are able to do it, you know, mm-hmm. when they're able to to conquer their fears, uh, when they're able to finally enjoy diving as what it is, you know. Uh, and 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 like you said, you know, I have a handful of students that actually comes back and they're like, I'm so happy, you know. And some of them, they are so sweet. They even write like like thank you messages for me. <laughs> and that really, really, really make my day. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I still keep them actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so those are the kinds of things that kind of make you feel that, you know, um, it's worth uh, being an instructor because you're really, really appreciated uh, for bringing or for, you know, literally hand-holding this person down to a whole new world. And of course, then, like I said, the other part of things would be the amazing experience that you get, uh, you know, with this encounters, with these majestic uh, creatures. Um, and, and like I said, you know, being able to explore the natural world. Yeah. Circling back to, you know, t- you know, our discussion about success, since that was the launch of the conversation, um, how do you measure growth? So like you said, you've been doing, um, you know, you've been diving and being a, and have been a diving uh, instructor for many, many years now, I think more than a decade. Um, How do you measure growth? 
same with success, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think growth is not linear. Right. Uh, it might sound very uh, funny when I say that because I think when you grow, okay, sometimes you grow and you don't even realize it. Mm. Like I said, some things, some decisions that you make, okay, you might look back 10 years down the road and you're like, oh, okay, I'm so glad that I made this decision. You know, I'm so glad that I've learned these things. You know, but back then, you probably don't know that it will lead to that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and sometimes growth goes backwards as well. You know, sometimes you need to fall or you need to kind of have some failures right. and kind of reset what you think you know or kind of reset what you should, you know, focus on, you know. Mm-hmm. And then from then on, you know, you find something different and then you grow in a different way. So that's why I said uh, growth is kind of non linear. Uh, as long as you feel that you are growing as a person, you know, you are learning something uh, or or you, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, I guess you're learning something, whether or not it's right or wrong or whether or not it's acceptable by society kind of doesn't matter. Right. Like like you said, I think my career choices or my career path is very non-linear, I guess. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not uh, like what the common society would be like. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, I guess I can proudly say, you know, are you doing what you like doing? And I know I am. I am doing what I like doing. I am putting a uh, foot on the table. You know, I am ha- having enough money to do what I love doing as well. Mm-hmm. And I guess uh, it's not a very conventional way of, of a career. But at the end of the day, we reach the same point as well. You know, we kind of reach the same point of doing what you're doing and what I'm doing to survive and to do what we love doing, you know? Absolutely. So, so it's, it's, I feel back to your question, growth is not linear, uh, but trust that process. So before we wrap this conversation up, it's like you said, um, you know, your career may not be very conventional, but it's something that you genuinely love. And there are many people that uh, who are listening to this, who are also, you know, probably they, they love, you know, exploring nature. They love um, diving uh, or they want to get into diving. Um, what words of wisdom would you have for those who are listening to this and, and think one day I want to do what Melanie is doing? Not just diving, but making that a, a, as a part of their career. At the end of the day, you know, sometimes uh, you don't know what you want. You know, some <laughs> we, we all don't know what we are doing, actually. Mm-hmm. We're just rolling with the punches, <laughs> right? We all are, right? you know. But at the end of the day, just, just be able to put one step forward, put one foot forward. You know, might not be right, might be right, you know, who knows, uh, unless you actually take the one step forward, right? And it's also okay if it's not right. If it's not right, you know what, like I said, growth is not linear, go backwards and then figure it out again, put another, you know, put another foot forward again. So, so, so um, back to your question is, you know, at the end of the day, just go, just try. You know, and if if you want to do uh, what I'm doing, you know, you might not necessarily do what I'm doing, but I guess the idea of doing a very unconventional career, at the end of the day, just know what your, again, back to, you know, this whole segment, defining mm-hmm. success, right? I guess to me, defining success is to be able to, to do what I love doing, which is to explore the natural world. So I guess back to my point, you know, how do I kind of measure What I want to do is, you know, I'm still able to do that. With what I'm doing, I'm able to explore a natural world. So then uh, that is how I kind of define my success, how I grow as well. So back to what you define as your success, uh, then do that. Do what moves you towards that. Do what propels you towards that. And on that note, thank you so much for joining me today, Melanie. Thanks, Dashwin. That was Melanie Hua, founder of Flow Dive Center, where she's also an instructor. If you missed any part of our conversation, you can also check us out on podcasts. We're available on the BFM app, bfm.my, or pretty much wherever you get your podcasts from, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the likes. I'm Dashran Johan, and this has been Redefining Success, BFM 89.9. You have been listening to a podcast from BFM 89.9, The Business Station. For more stories of the same kind, download the BFM app.